about Kerman's log, day 60. So we got a nasty surprise shortly after docking at the crow's nest around Ninmas. I don't really know how to describe it. I guess you could say that the solar panel trusses went crazy, but that doesn't really cover it. I'm not superstitious, but if there ever was a Kraken strike, this was one. We undocked immediately and got a safe distance away, but I didn't have time to refuel the bullet's mod propellant, and I used all I had left to get away from the station. I've already transmitted all our ship's sensor information to the authorities. I hope no one tries to blame me for what happened. On the bright side, I managed to pick up a job, scanning a Class D asteroid passing around 3,000 kilometers away from Kerbin. Since the job requires that I temporarily go to an escape trajectory and then retro to stay in Kerbin SOI, the contract offered a complimentary refueling, so I won't have to dock at a station afterwards. The fuel is going to come to me. Erichelle is still on board, of course. Good thing she didn't disembark yet when the station went nuts. She's decided to stay on until we get to Duna, and we're doing the asteroid job until the transfer window opens. I started plotting to leave Mimis SOI on the same orbit that we undocked from the station. No point uh, lingering around. We had a lot of different burns to do to meet up with the asteroid. It was passing by on a retrograde orbit around Kerbin, which was another reason why they gave us the complimentary refueling. It's a little bit difficult to catch up to it. I decided it would be best to meet up with the asteroid before it hit periapsis around Kerbin so that I could retroburn at periapsis in order to stay in Kerbin SOI. By the way, speaking about Erichelle, I need to make something quite clear. We are not making any baby Kerbals. Ever since my last log, my mother's been pelting me with messages with not so subtle hints. Now she's got my grandma in on it, asking me when she's gonna get to boast about some great grandkids. Now, I'm not saying that we've been distant with each other all this time. We've spent a long time in the ship together, but I'm not gonna go into details in this log, and we are not planning to make any babies. And I think that's enough said. Anyway, we left Minmus SOI and proceeded on with the huge burn to match inclinations with the incoming asteroid. We did have plenty of fuel and we also had a little bit of ore left in the ore holding tanks that hadn't been converted. I was debating whether to convert that to mop propellant or to fuel. Ultimately, I decided to convert it just straight to fuel. So I remained without mop propellant. But they'll top off my mouth propellant tanks when they, uh, they give me the payment for the job, so it should be alright. I didn't need any mouth propellant to rendezvous with the asteroid after all. When we left Minmus SOI, the asteroid was still about 12 days away. When I made my final burn to tighten up my orbit around Kerbin, that was two days before meeting up with the asteroid, and that brought me to about 5 kilometers away from it. So it was a pretty long process, and even Erichelle, who's usually totally excited and bubbly, was a little bit tired and uh, bored during the whole thing. Well, like I've said before, when it comes to space, it's how people deal with the quiet times, the long, long transfers, that tells you all about them. And at least she didn't go completely stir-crazy on me. That would have not been good for our Duna plans. She turned out to be decent company, even though uh, we couldn't really solve our boredom problem. On the way, I decided to test out the equipment and do some scanning of Kerbin, just to try things out. So far, the bullet's been great. It maneuvers much better than the ED stretch used to because everything is much better balanced. On the downside, I did figure out that this would not be the best thing to take to the surface of Duna. I mean, the whole idea that you would just make a propulsive landing seems simple enough, even though it doesn't have parachutes, but it does have those fins on the tail. And the tricky thing about the fins on the tail is that it pulls the center of lift down, and that means that the center of lift is in the wrong place compared to the center of mass. At least I think so. It's tough to say, but I do think they, they fooled me on, on whether this thing could land on Duna or not. It might be safe to land on Ike, though. So maybe it's not totally a hopeless situation, but really I need a much better ship. And I have been saving up money here. So maybe I'll be able to uh, trade up after this and whatever jobs I can get at Duna. But anyway, our first pass of the asteroid was a really, really close one. And after that I, I was a little bit more cautious. We really uh, sort of almost skinned the surface of it. 
The mission was simple enough, but it did get me thinking. Maybe if I had a ship with a claw on it, I could uh, take contracts to bring asteroids into orbit around Kerbin. Now, a Class D one like this is probably out of the realm of any vehicle I could afford. This is more something the government would have to tackle. But maybe some Class A and Class B asteroids I could grab a hold of for some people who want to do mining on it. And that would be an idea. Maybe if I could just attach a claw to the docking clamp on the front of my vehicle, I'd wonder how much claws cost. Probably not too expensive. They are a very specialized piece of equipment though. But maybe because they're in high demand, they'll be cheaper. Our close passes of the asteroid got Arachelle all excited again. She was thrilled, and I have to say it was quite a quite a spectacular sight. And we made a few laps around it, took uh, pictures and scans from every angle. It was a fun time, but eventually we had to depart our little asteroid and uh, keep ourselves in Kerbin SOI. We couldn't go into interplanetary space. I did not have enough fuel to go straight to Duna after this, so that wasn't an option. I transmitted all the data from the asteroid while we were still in the vicinity of it, just in case our employers wanted something else. But they said they were thrilled with the information we sent, and they would be sending the fuel up pretty soon. So I got into orbit around Kerbin again, and I decided to go for a nice circular orbit. Might have been trying to show off there. It won't make any difference for the fuel transfer vehicle. I don't think Arachelle even noticed what kind of orbit we ended up in, though. She didn't seem to pay any attention. Maybe she's more of an eccentric type. That might make sense. Anyway, I did manage to get her some good views of Kerbin and the Moon, though. So I think she was uh, happy with that. Well, that does it for this log, I think. No word yet on what kind of contract we can get for Duna. And I don't think we can manage another contract within Kerbin SOI before we head out there. But I'll have to see. Either way, we're going to head over to Duna. And maybe we'll dock up with a station over there. And see what contracts they have available. <laughs>